திருப்பதி ராவ் அண்ட் அவர் உமாசங்கர் ராஜகோபால்ஸ்ட்டிங் <laughs> 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 persons. distinguished professors industrial persons and faculty with a great joy and excelt excitation we have come to the end of memorable faculty development program it is a day that marks a new beginning i feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all present here on behalf of department of mathematics geetham institute of science and center for learning and sustainability geetham we express our sincere gratitude to distinguished professors kumar shankar garu professor sri sharma edavalli garu professor sri tirupati rao garu professor sri a chandrashekar garu who are participating in this program till date we have completed six glorious sessions by renowned academicians today we are going to have the final session on artificial intelligence in auto assembly design presided by professor a rajagopal garu head sqc and qr co unit indian statistical institute coimbatore now i invite dr v sirisha to introduce today's speaker professor sri rajagopal over to sirisha ma'am thank you madam it's my honor to be able to introduce professor a rajagopal garu six sigma trainer and practitioner sqc and or specialist former head indian statistical institute coimbatore professor rajgopal obtained ms in statistics from indian statistical institute calcutta in 1981 he was a student of professor taguchi and trained on orthogonal experimental concepts from professor c r rao having 40 years of academic and industrial experience he guided 20 phd scholars and trained about 200 young graduates healthcare and software professionals about 60 papers were published in leading journals and conferences professor rajgopal developed a syllabus for employable skills introducing textile management course for centrally aided vallabhai patel institute and their collaboration with tiruvarur central university he is a visiting faculty for various institutions and a board member in the academic council of isi sv university avinashlingam university Acharya Nagarjuna University and many more. Professor Rajgopal worked for various industries including software, healthcare, engineering, fluid research, aerospace research, automobiles, textiles, fertilizer, petroleum, cement and transmission belts. His contribution to healthcare industry include patent uh, patient focused quality improvement program for ophthalmology, dialectology and cardiology. and developing healthcare metrics for analysis towards nabh accreditation he is a chairman of rva accredited global certification accreditation system professor rajgopal extended consulting services to mrs cts mrs lmw fcri reliance polyester elgi lnt ramco software hindustan latex eid habasit group swiss TVS and a large number of textile units and auto ancillaries. He has the quality of promoting Indian products products brand. 
In this facet, he visited various countries of all the continents for customer interaction and competitive pricing. Well versed in, mo in modern quality concepts using statistical tools and techniques, Professor Rajagopal received many recognitions. He received IPR rights on auto sector for design improvements of Brakes India. Business advisor for industry specific software development for Microsoft to cluster of small industries of Chennai, auto ancillaries, faculty of SISI Chennai and Tirupur Garment Industries in developing quality focused sampling principles. He facilitated quality system certification, environmental standard certification, NABA certification, risk and opportunity an analytics, turnaround strategies and conducted many surveys of parents, patients, electoral and cleanliness index preparation for state government. He is in the board of academic council of various leading universities and Indian Statistical Institute. He is honored with Dynamic Indian of the Millennium Award for the work Applied Statistical Analytics for Quality, Reliability, Research Methods for Business Process Excellence and Systems, carried out with 65 years old corporate KG Trust along with other celebrities on 15 September 2019. Now with due respect, I invite Rajgopal sir to deliver the talk. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for a very long, uh, appreciate you, Dr. Srisha, being introduced to me so much. <laughs> I myself surprised that you read the entire thing. Okay. I am happy that uh, Dr. Umashankar recalled my think when it is 100 years of uh, Dr. C. R. Rao, pronounced to him. And the topic was discussed along with uh, Dr. C there, that what is that uh, I can choose when it was given to me. First, I thought, uh, am I audible? Yeah, audible. Okay. First, I thought I will uh, uh, put uh, for the benefit of uh, students uh, who are, I think uh, you are about 363 participants. And uh, in that 363, 60, 64 now. Like Corona, it is increasing. 65. <laughs> okay. okay, 365 participants uh, might not have heard uh, the effort of uh, Dr. C. R. Rao. Now we are all, uh, I can say, gifted with uh, ICT, Inter Information Communication Technology, that uh, we can conduct this sort of meetings from one in Vaisak, one in Pondicherry. Such a facility is the one in uh, so. Now, after one hour, uh, we are going to have a global meeting. It is all possible, so no corona can stop our activities because of our ICT. But I should say, when I was in ISI, I used to think, uh, even now when I go, how do they work uh, in those days without computer? That is PC, no? No personal computer. We had a Fortran 4 uh, uh, mainframe that was brought by Mahalnobis. First time in India, the mainframe from Soviet Union came and the computer came to ISI campus first time. National Sampling Survey was just doing. At the time, this complicated model, how Mahalnobis and C.R. Rao brought it. And taking the, taking the, I was given a problem of how many fish in the pond in ISI, uh, while we take rounds in ISI campus. So at the time, we are talking PPM in uh, calculations of quality and all those things in Six Sigma. They were making PPB in their uh, Rao Maitra table. Parts per billion is uh, worked out. Some of the tables that uh, they have made for uh, very critical quality control charts uh, in CRM Rao table, I was surprised that how did they arrive at uh, what is the type of uh, calculations they would have done? Where did they do all this? I remember I did one experimental st studies in uh, India, that was Union Motors. Professor C.R. Prasad uh, was there. He just breathed his last. I should also put my pronouns to him. That uh, will take half minute to recall C.R. Prasad's contribution to statistical field under C.R. Rao and, uh, and uh, he died last week. I think Sharma may be knowing. And many of you may be knowing Professor C.R. Prasad. 
the way he he wrote the course notes in those days still uh, operation research course notes by cr cr prasad is uh, well known he breathed his last at uh, 90 years uh, let us make one minute for his soul to rest in peace i will request to all of you because he was one of the reasons for writing a good course notes uh, whatever we have done up to tagus's time and it is all available in uh, now in uh, uh, e platform of isi 108 case studies and a uh, lot of course notes on linear graphs and cartogonal array techniques by cr rao and then how it is taken forward as a linear graph by taguchi these are all something history how they made very complicated things without computer in those days so let me just put my one minute uh, and professor data majunda who is the computer vision cvpr we have a computer vision pattern recognition pattern recognition department in isi headed by dr data majunda was around 80 years he also lost his we lost him also some one month back so for both the souls rest in peace i take one minute on this occasion can i with the help of the chairman yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yes, sir. may his soul rest in peace thank you sir thank you so much sir, for uh, honoring our... is it okay are you are you able to see no sir no are you able to see my screen no, no sir. sir only desktop is uh, visible sir. this one yeah are you able Then to you see select your okay, specific ppt sir i have opened the specific ppt it is showing on my laptop are you seeing no 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 okay. right okay space you go to the share option yeah i'm seeing share option okay now you start again uh, share yeah. can you see now yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. now it's came it is coming is that okay yeah okay, sir. yes sir right i think i should uh, i should have played in this mode the cr rouse also but anyhow you have all have seen it yeah, yeah. i will share i will share that for that other people which i took uh, during 90th birthday anniversary of dr cr rao it was about all his uh, work the work that i am going to talk now is uh, artificial intelligence that uh, we have been uh, working on uh, as uh, advanced methods uh, in uh, industrial environments of applications i tried this it was uh, i did it in certain platforms also and it was went in uh, ipr rights i'll talk about the uh, is that clear uh, or should i make it further uh, bigger make it in a slide view sir in sir in the slide show oh this yeah, is yeah. in uh, this is in different format now i have made it in because uh, many people send some data it is in office ws format so to make it bigger i'll make it bigger if possible please press f5 sir i tried that okay thank you sir. f5 i tried it is not taking it should come with this this is not the usual powerpoint this is in another format uh, that some some morning i received some file in wps office so everything converted in that format in the afternoon maybe can i continue like this no yes, sir continue sir continue okay because we are losing time yeah okay uh this this one was uh, see in the design changes when you are talking about uh, 
even now this uh, clinical trials that is going in covid 19 situations that i am trying with uh, two pharma industries there are certain things that we cannot change certain things that we can change all the technological thing science statistical science and data science it is observing what is happening and engineering what is happening when we observe scientifically through statistical methods engineering is helping us to develop a design now we are talking make in india design in india this methods helps statistical science helps in designing also engineering is designing where we are trying to make advanced product like a auto vehicles electric cars and robotics operations like that in the case of technology we use it in different applications like textile applications or aerospace applications or healthcare applications then it comes or leather applications it comes as a technology so what i thought is that basically we should observe the signs which cannot be changed and engineering and technology can be continuously improved upon statistical science is able to find out basically what cannot be changed and how we can change it in the engineering and technology after observing what is happening naturally so i make a small pair here that we need the maturity of will and effort to change what i can and the wisdom to know the difference which we cannot change and which we can change gender and age you cannot change lifestyle you can change science you cannot change technology and engineering you can change knowing the difference a big challenge million dollar question the intelligence is the decision making the when god created us yes it was creation of the best design is the human being you have our best and nothing else has come after that uh, such a good intelligence the mind is created by god and that intelligent mind is trying to put that knowledge matured in the mission and then make it as a wisdom that it is used in a very good way in healthcare and automobiles so intelligence to knowledge to maturity to wisdom is what we are trying to c as a i will talk about 30 40 minutes sir huh? is it okay pictorial understanding human intelligence that i want to talk and machine intelligence people behind artificial intelligence data mining in artificial intelligence semi is a very good method that is an approach sample explore modify model and assess then decision support model time permits i'll make one case study of brake pair wear predictions in artificial intelligence model which is now coming going to come in the dashboard of the designs of uh, this is a very interesting uh, story which all of you are seeing i have just depicted a story what is happening now after lockdown situations that all the industries are like panjali the profit is being stripped and competition is coming from this fellow from chinese itself now we are trying to see china plus 1 that india can take forward and we are trying to make it lot of orders to come into india on textiles primarily and secondarily on pharmacology these two areas i am trying to now i have been successful uncertainty in business that is what is happening now business insights and uh, machine learning that is what is going to help coming from the uh, i put it as a uh, krishna's employees and suppliers even though they are with the company they are all finding difficult how to save it is the panja pandavas and domain expert is here our krishna 
subject matter experts. So I depicted this as choosing right X among many X's to guess best response Y, the intelligence. This is how I made it that how artificial intelligence is now going to help in this scenario. Next. Many a time it happens that unawareness not known, unknown to many become the reason for failures. Like it happened in uh, tabletop that near Coimbatore, you may be knowing Arna, Calicut. It was not an unawareness. It was aware that this was raining. It was not that known. The pilot is well known. He is a gold medalist. But the plane went into two, two pieces. It is designed for getting to two pieces and three pieces when it gave it with the but he switched off the engine. So unknown to many become the reason for failures. This unawareness uh, is always happening in the death of uh, uh, COVID cases, whereas nephros, nef where kidney failure patients are more prone to. And the next uh, is your uh, DM, that diabetic patients. Sometimes it will involve confused state of taking alternative decisions, this or that. In the procedures also it happens. The design also it happens. Invariably caught by severe impact of wrong decisions to regret late. In these situations of decision making, definitely artificial intelligence helps a lot that what to do in that particular situation. And that is done by many cases. People behind artificial intelligence, I think many of you know Mahal Nobis and uh, his uh, D square uh, discriminant analysis is much used. Just two hours back, I was with uh, All India nephrologist uh, in all the people. I was talking about uh, a particular methodology of discriminations, particularly the discrimination of the diseases. Those symptoms are same. Discriminating is uh, very important. There, Mahalnovich's D square is uh, classification analysis helps a lot. And he speaks about key technology as a science. For key technology, statistics is helping a lot as a powerful accelerator. And C.R. Rao is uh, he was in there. He says that take some sample. They call it in uh, healthcare. I call it PICOT, population sample and uh, research questions and then ethical and uh, it gets into the scientific activities. Unknown from what you know. What we don't know, we don't know. What we know, we also we don't know when you don't study from what is, you know the unknown. So taking some samples from the market and the production and making the next design based on the competitiveness, which can work. When it is predicted, then it is prevented. When prediction is finding the pattern trends, this all of you know that Dr. Rao used to say. Alan Turing, when I was one year old, I think, uh, this subject came, British computer scientist. John McCarthy already everybody knows, American computer scientist, again, 1956. More than I can say 40 60 years, more than 60 years. Jaren Kasparov is a deep blue 1997 IBM's uh, Watson's method and now SAP oracles. These are all using this, uh, they are all using it for transaction purpose. For uh, purpose of innovative designing and new insight, still SAP and uh, I can say even uh, our Watson is not used in IBM. Now I think uh, I'm trying how we can use all this uh, methodology in design and development in healthcare and uh, industrial environment. And data Majumdar, we, in the beginning we we'll put our one minute silence who have made this uh, CVPR, computer vision pattern recognition. He was in ISI, he breathed his class, Shankar Kumar Paul, on soft computing techniques, he did a lot of work. So, Badmashri Awadi. 
and uh, the first woman in IEEE who have done on machine intelligence, Professor Sangamitra. I work with uh, all of them from the SQC point of view and operation research. Some work I tried my best uh, that uh, it is being used by the industries. In India, the problem is that uh, every design is coming from collaborators and even the present one, FDA, that Corona COVID-19, unless uh, FDA concludes that uh, there is a vaccine, this situation will not change. Whoever says whatever it is, and even if Indian recovery rate is high, Indian death rate is low, and Indian social food is good, and our traditional thing is there, whatever you say, it will not be taken, because designing is still very weak in India. It has to be approved. But patients are more here. The vehicles are more here. Population is more here. Software is from here only. The analytical thinking is from India. Unfortunately, in technology and engineering, science and also healthcare science, Indian front is still have to go a long way that we are now opened to show our talent uh, abroad to Western development countries, integrating statistical science, computer science, and the domain knowledge. Artificial smile we already have. Artificial sweetener we have come across when we take a diabetic patient. Artificial flower we have come across. I'm now working with the IPR rights of uh, artificial coal, which is taken from organic uh, acrinet and uh, and develop a coal in the furnace itself, and artificial intelligence. Human network is uh, natural intelligence. When it is trained to the machine that it doesn't take, becomes an artificial intelligence. Human intelligence and machine intelligence, the major difference is that human intelligence is subjective. Like you saw in Bangalore, in Calicut Airport, it is subjective. First attempt was failure, second attempt it did not make it, third attempt it went to the ditch nearby tabletop airport. So it is subjective. Even though he was a pilot in the Indian Air Force with a lot of uh, gold medals. Uh, it was subjective one, third one. It was raining heavily and uh, man can learn, man can take decision, man can emotional driven, why not we try? Subjective. But here, mission cannot learn, mission cannot take decision, mission data driven. It is not emotion driven, it is data driven. Here only comes that our uh, statistical science, uh, analytical techniques uh, helps a lot to data driven and subjective thing become very objective that it becomes a chance of success and chance of uh, passing is uh, higher. So here from human intelligence to machine intelligence, it is always told that uh, we'll land in trouble of uh, employment opportunities being denied, but it is not so. Free will of human faculty. Am I am I correct? Are you all uh, hearing me? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, I I will try to go quickly now. Is that okay? Because no. we last few minutes in the video. Okay. Now what I want to say is that free will of human being, that faculties, ambition, privilege, and human being decides. That you are fulfilled. Also decide who plays the cards first. Unfettering the faculty to face facts become intelligence. This is very important. To face facts become intelligence. Above likes and dislikes, we have to make a very good decision making in business risk analysis. Such an intelligent mission may come in future. Let us go with small goals for artificial intelligence. That overall intelligence that takes care of. Man is the giver and mission is the given. The giver is not in given. You cannot see human being in the mission, but human trained data sets is already working in the mission. His faculty is one in the mission. So how do we train the mission is what free will of human. Free will means you should have the sign off that you go ahead, even if one or two failure comes, go ahead in 
making the design that's very important this coexistence is subject matter expert computer science expert strategical experts and business who are all the stakeholders they have to make it now i find uh, even the one that uh, jsw you know what is happening the enforcement director it is saying 1900 900 million now it is in the stock stock market how these things are happening in the business intelligence that they are not able to pay the enforcement director's reason is sold 19 million dollar in power projects that what has been happening in the jsw steel industries so here the business intelligence the signing off by the top authority is very important that such a model is approved ethically and scientifically for converting the decision making process on the machines it is a risk disruption of jobs is one thing that is always talked that when the mission takes over what would happen to the job knowledge of domain experts have been taken over by machine denying opportunities of jobs and firing too much such disruption also enhances displacement in employment in innovative areas repetitive job in music ticket reservation auto doffing system auto winding in textile processing packing and inspection in manufacturing inquiries in service price quotations communication systems these are all now taken over by machines even domain knowledge of doctors is now going to be duty doctor will be able to tell what the senior doctor will be taking risk alerts of process owners and discrimination decision by embedding artificial intelligence this people think that it will replace the job only repetitive jobs are now efficiently and effectively carried out by the machines and not that non repetitive jobs of designing a non repetitive jobs of logistics uh, of uh, making now that hyderabad uh, one small company is going to take over blockchain technology of distributing 172 countries they want to see that uh, the co the the vaccine is uh, distributed before the expiry time of the shell life of the uh, medicines so how that is possible that is because of the blockchain technology that's being decided by the machine so some of the difficult job where time is a part where money is a part we may need to take over give it to the trained data sets in job scopes i can say that 1.5 million lakh jobs 1.5 lakh jobs remains vacant for high technical data science and artificial intelligence machine intelligence people i can say that whoever have part out of i say they got about two three jobs one and a half lakh jobs remain vacant semi skilled services of securities logistics service multimedia are demanded now that these areas the people who are in production departments may go for other alternative areas where they will go for Uh, new areas of uh, job creations you may not be able to do the repetitive jobs in the industries definitely it is costly and all of you know about the big data all nine v's all of you know i don't need to explain this i am skipping this parity volume value velocity don't think that uh, it should come from several sources even a single source you may get all the nine datas all the nine class all the nine type of uh, vis i was with the aerospace industry they were pr producing engine cover engine cover is a uh, small like a shoe shoe cover shoe cover part you can just imagine yes, a shoe your your shoe with a cover on fingering your uh, uh, covering your fingers it will be a u shape one and it is a very small very small child part but very significant part for taking up the aircraft above 20000 feet if it is opening little bit then it is a problem so it has got 144 dimensions 144 dimensions one piece 
and it cost about more than two lakhs. All the 144 dimensions to physically check is difficult because time is very limited. And we have to see how we can do it, uh, this checking. And that itself, you have variety of uh, three dimensional specification. The volume of your uh, data that is flowing, the value is in one piece somewhere around four lakhs. And the velocity of uh, asking that they are uh, given this the velocity from various design department, that is elect electroplating, production, manufacturing, the velocity of the accuracy of the data that we are collecting with respect to the measurement system analysis, the validity of it that it is coming from good area for predictions. And you can you able at the, at the end whether you can visualize all this from the single product, still the, we don't never think that 100% inspection or many, many larger data sets are needed for big data. Even in the small data, a small individual, you can say human body, itself can create 257 bones are there, million nerves are there, specialization of 17 departments, it is all con continually working and the one man can produce all this type of big data. When it becomes complicated, then all the people works together. So don't think that big data involves many patients, many pieces, many individuals. It's not necessarily that the variables can be many. Analytics, uh, now you know the, what is going on in the gold prices, Sapna series cases, you know, temperature, pressure, speed, in the energy thermodynamics. This is now, now I'm working on one particular program of uh, purchasing power that is uh, the industries are buying power to reduce the cost of generation of power because state state it is and it is a game it is a good game that only statistical people can buy make a better decision making of when to buy because they have to buy three days before the individual within parties politics also that is that also it is I recently did the 12 sun signs with 27 stars. Many people are deciding by horoscope their life pattern and even the industrialists are going. This is not a good time. Sometime even the procedures in the hospital, they go, they all redundant, uh, I find uh, this horoscope uh, and it is very complicated, uh, very complicated science. Anything has got uh, exceptions and making a study in this area, I tried that, I did it one, one work on this. And uh, the use of data, information, technology, statistical and quantitative methods. This is done in uh, uh, Vedic astrology. In Jaipur, I did it, it worked very well. It is for estimating the uh, fetal is uh, male or female. It is not for India. It is used in uh, Europe and uh, US. And this software is made and given to them and they are using it. It is in India, it is illegal to predict the gender of the child. Flowchart, data, information, analytics, insight, solutions, implementation, verification. This is very simple. I need not talk to this of uh, how, how the data becomes the integration part of the institutions when it goes through all these uh, uh, methodologies, step-by-step -step approach. And all of these four you already know, the descriptive analytics, where mean, median and distributions, chi-square analysis, the basic work is done. Diagnostic analysis, where we are trying to see what variable we should take among several variables, like in cotton classifications and also in the missionary data selections. Then from there you move to the predictive analysis. Then you move to the classifying the probability of events such as getting job or all those things. And prescriptive analysis at the end you have to give a solutions. A and B together can do better job. And decisive analytics taking the best out of the various options. So descriptive analysis, diagnostic analysis, predictive analysis, prescriptive analysis and decisive analysis here everybody, you cannot check uh, to know the diabetic in the, you cannot check everybody, all the diabetic patient in India. That's not possible. You have to go by sample. 
and by the time you collect some more people will come or there will be in the, some people in the process so the detective and inductive scope is important the generally it is true specifically it is not true in my case it is not true or in my case it is true generally it is not true so this is two areas where the intelligence decisions is needed with passive and active when descriptive diagnostic predictive and prescriptive how these four things are working from generalization in the passive side and active side what is active side is that the diagnostic is that you are uh, seeing what exactly the energy killed then you are seeing how much time it take how much distance it takes for the automobile to stop when you apply the brake or the diagnostic can be in health signs yes symptomatic cases that oximeter is saying below 92 and the patient is going very well then you check the positiveness of the covid 19 then igg ign is more then it becomes active diagnostics descriptive is how many are there from that you need to make a predictive one how many people will be coming like this so that the hospital environment is risk free because they come with asymptomatic today and they become positive tomorrow after testing then the entire team will be separated now you need to see what is asymptomatic how it become predictive predictive next day is very important for the hospital environment because it is uh, it will stop the entire uh, non corona patient also may get uh, affected active is prescriptive from that you need to go what is a implementation model we should make it you see i am making one uh, i think it should work <laughs> Guck dir das doch mal an. Man soll denken, ich will einfach die ändern. <lacht> Dass sie laufen. Sie laufen. Ich bin gerade über das Training von Datasets. Oh, das ist das geil. Ah, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Chow pull the button. Chow the button. Chow the button. Chow the button. Chow the button. 그러니까 <웃음> 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 <웑음> 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 <웃음> <웑음> 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 <웃음> <웑음> 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 <웃음> <웑음> 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 <웑> 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 <웑>
then model what can be predicted, then assess, verify, and validate it. So we call it a SEMA model for a starting to a artificial intelligence uh, approach. Sample, generate representative, explore visualization and basic descriptions, modify select variables, and here more important is sometimes doesn't follow from any particular predictive models, uh, some transformations is needed. The box Cox Johnson's or any other. Then modi, model it, uh, use variety of statistical and machine learning models. Then evaluate, verify and validate the usefulness of the models. Sample, explore, modify, model and assess. Decision support model. This is uh, what uh, what is measured is valued. What is valued is measured. Money is valued, so you count it. Time is sometimes not valued, you waste it. So what you measure, you value it. What is valued what is measured. Decision support, decide, review, act. This I think uh, we always do in the academic, uh, academic situations. We decide whether a person needs to be passed or not, given PhD, given or not. We make a review, then make an actions, depending on the papers that is being produced and it is in the market. So decision support model, now IoT has come in the Internet of Things. In this, uh, the data is coming from various sources, then it is being processed. That's what blockchain technology, even iCloud is not needed. It can do at different places. That's what going to happen in new business, new normal situation, that big corporates will decentralize into small, small clusters. In that clusters, some of the activities will happen. From there, it will be sent for assembly. This may be the future model of uh, um, business processes. Business intelligence, aligning business intelligence, strategy process, not only improve our organization's ability to respond to change. Here, very important is that infrastructure and development investments. See, today investment is done very carefully. Though money is available, where to put it is uh, in a yeah, situation now it is very much earlier days money was not available and whatever was available it was uh, there are two things one is uh, diversification and then diverge how you misuse it put uh, take loan in one particular industry and develop another industry and make your financial re-engineering accordingly. That's all, all diversification. Sometime you need to make it for product development. You may need to diverse into new market, diverse into new product. That's what I made here. I don't talk about uh, divergence of fund in different areas. In this business intelligence, a good artificial model is now available from the banks. And that uh, Reserve Bank Governor is also talking that repo rate will not be touched provided you have a proper uh, discipline of not diverging the fund here and there. Data mining I need not touch. Many of you know this is a very important area. Only one thing I need to say that people always say that why we take all this stretch way of working. Uh, ship will be safe in the shore but it is not designed for it. We have to see that our designs are going to the uh, to the high seas and then it is able to withstand. That's what uh, it starts from getting a next child to next job. It starts from filing a case to pardoning everything. It starts from expanding to contractions. It starts from 100 plus risk that is business risk, environmental risk. Today environmental risk is uh, becoming very important in textile industries and uh, auto industries and medical industries of throwing waste and classification of waste and then this is very important area now climatic changes financial re-engineering now many people are getting into where blockchain technology is used counterparty risk this is a warranty guarantee that also artificial intelligence is used in the prediction of the life credit risk is now done legal risk operational risk market risk i think uh, these things i am not much talking though as some work have been done and uh, this is one thing about uh, your uh, project management, where again the quotations and tenders are made, when designs are made, we use this uh, intelligent model, 
where this gamma distribution model expected value of most likely time highest possible outcome lowest possible the distribution is taken and then from this a good a good tender is given and i have given to lnt it was working very well that a few subcontractors could also get the good job at the competitive rate and this type of learnings in artificial intelligence we already know supervised learning where it is already classified that the group is known which which the outcome is known example whether the in our know, obstetrician and gynecology whether it is a uh, natural term delivery or it is a low abdominal sectional delivery you know the outcome from the outcome you see what all the symptoms that has come in mid semester so these are all already known cotton is classified already we know where exactly it be used then how to blend it here similarly you know where the vehicle is running and then what type of class with this sort of supervised learning is used in where the group is already available sometime it is just coming without we don't know what it is it is just like landing of students and landing of some post graduates in a university in a private institutions we don't know under what background and what school they have come and by the time they spend one hour, now new education policy mphil is removed and then they can switch over anywhere to anyone now it is an unsupervised learning earlier it was a grouped one that the statistics fellow with computer application or engineering they will be now it is unsupervised that we they have to they have to they have to decide during the course of the graduation itself what they can go raw material how it can be classified type of customers that you have to make the pricing this grouping is needed here a lot of came in clustering principal component analysis are used reinforcement learning is done by artificial neural network that is uh, your intelligent systems in data mining machine learning that is uh, is artificial intelligence how it is converted to the machine learning once you train the data sets you can write the computer codes then you get into the machine learning so the machine learning is supervised and supervised and reinforcement reinforcement is learned from mistakes and supervised is data driven and uh, supervised is task driven predict next value here identify clusters here learn from mistakes so that it makes the next uh, next job correctly supervised learning i am making further one i share this uh, uh, slides is that okay these are all uh, uh, academic only classification prediction in the predictions one what are all the methods that is used maximum likelihood k level in the classification what are all the used in the new uh, see the whole thing is that how we use different tools and techniques in solving the problem by packaging it properly making it in a different uh, baskets of uh, analysis that's what i am trying to say supervised learning and supervised learning i think some of you may be a computer specialist also uh, and here i have talked about uh, unsupervised learning where clustering and associations are done k means clustering reinforcement learning is about your uh, this i will little bit touch close to human learning algorithms learns to policy how to act in government environment every action has some impact in the environment and the environment provides rewards that guides the learning algorithm the environment that you are working with the actions this is a, this is the whole philosophy of uh, how mistakes can happen like mars murphy's law the chance of things going wrong is more what are the opportunities of things going wrong doctor's father swooned yesterday you know the surprising thing doctor's father swooned yesterday why the father was taking what should be taken before food what should be taken after food he reversed it he swooned he became unconscious sugar level went down so this sort of uh, uh, mistakes that is happening such things can be taken care by a proper uh, reinforcement learning that such is 
zero defect happens. Feedback after several steps, these are all uh, how the mistakes can happen. And reinforcement learning due to genetics, we studied in many other disciplines. Here I have, I have personally worked in operation research area, simulation based optimization. I have done these two areas. I have not done any work on swarm intelligence and genetic algorithm I only know, statistics I only know, but I have not used anywhere. Operation research and simulation based optimization have done some work and uh, it is being used also in the reinforced applications, human level video, gameplay. Now these are all uh, where this uh, reinforced learning, traffic light control, property. Now the traffic light control uh, smart city projects. Uh, uh, I was there in uh, Coimbatore uh, smart city projects, but I can say it was uh, useful in certain areas, not in all the areas, traffic light control systems. And it was also only particular duration of time, but not a robot deep learning. Uh, many of you know it is much, it is much, much, much required now in image processing on radiology department of healthcare. This is, uh, I'm just trying when the strokes comes to a uh, patient uh, who is already having a mild attack and where the block size is there in the radiology. There some work can be done. I tried in automobile. I will just share that certificate. This is the references. The steps in data mining, I think uh, I will leave this, uh, this. Is that okay? I have a case study that will take 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Should I share it or I will share it to all of you by uh, email to Dr. Sridhar? Yes, sir. You can share it to Sridhar, sir. Okay, because uh, I have wanted to give the concepts that how artificial intelligence is used in different areas. I have done uh, good work uh, for the dashboard of how brake pad wear can be predicted because uh, it is very difficult uh, depending on the driver and road conditions. I take about uh, 20,000 data points from various driving points of Wooty driving, Totabeta driving, Lonawala driving and driving by heavy vehicles, then Tata vehicles, then how he puts the stoppages, put the logger and see what is the energy killed. From the energy kill, how much time it takes to stop the vehicle, what is the distance that it takes. From that, can you say how much is the wear in the brake pad? Because that is non-replaceable. It is usually taken as a new, new one. You cannot repair it. Brake pad, you cannot repair it. But to take it out and see, it will take four or five hours. So it is not possible. It is inside. It is not like every time you can do a, a NGO, NGO gram or uh, I, your uh, to, uh, topographic images. It's not possible every time. You may need to find out from some symptoms or patho pathological readings. Like that, you have to take it from some of the observational studies of how the brakes is used and what is the temperature of the front and back. And we took uh, all these readings, temperature and the energy killed. From the energy killed, uh, we used the Hotling T-square method. Then we developed a model that uh, if it is more than T-square is 13.2, that is energy killed with the temperature, then we are able to find out what exactly the brake pad we are is. That we find from that text, we could find out which Y. That is the brake pad we are conveyed. In short, I have just explained, though I didn't uh, tell you the, show you the slides. I can share with that. Maybe that I have to get the, because it is in the uh, IPR rights of the company. I will also ask them. I thought I will share it for the purpose of uh, your uh, seminar and conference. But because of time, I just explained to you that brake pad we are, how it is useful to come in the dashboard of intelligent systems uh, that it will tell that you need to be alert in driving the vehicles and also you need to be alert now in changing the brake pads so that there is a predictive methodology of preventing the possible risk of accidents. 
thank you so much huh? i think i have taken a lot of time and uh, any questions you can ask yes sir uh, uh, we have four questions sir here posted by yes. participants okay uh, the first one is from sweta sri she is asking in what way linear programming problems are applied in artificial intelligence see uh, today the can i answer or uh, yes sir okay sweta ji it's a good important thing today that uh, many many companies are coming with varieties of products varieties of products from volume of production now they are going to agile productions a textile is coming with medical textiles geo textiles uh, home textiles and then they have what is called the industrial textiles it is no more just an apparel for a human being even in the human being night wear children wear mother wear pregnant women wear and then event wear so many varieties have come the companies are not in a position to decide which is their work now next in the lockdown situation a good product mix problems is now coming out everywhere everywhere every industry i touched upon textile industry because there the opportunity is very high because india being a highly highly intensive textile industry with the employment agriculture and cotton is grown much in india similarly is the case in jewelry industry where people doesn't want to put more gold into the design, into the product but it should have a very high high area of volume that when you wear it it covers your entire body but the weight will be less than 2 grams can you make such a design this sort of product mix problems linear programming is very 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 helpful and once the model is made then it can be put into the artificial intelligence that every time it is not possible to collect data and update it and then upgrade it and then validate it and then make a online processing this is very difficult for any human being now if it is put it in the sap and then make it as a online processing it will come to the managing director's mobile from there he can operate in product mix problems it is much needed similarly in pollutions of land contaminations and water contaminations what will happen now this pollution control board in india is saying that you 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 make the link of your uh, entire output to our uh, computer we will monitor it we don't want any 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 sorts of uh, latin we will monitor it in our computer now all the industries are having double thinking third thinking fourth thinking whether we should expose ourselves to the government in pollution control board can they monitor us is it not a risk for the business they can stop they can remove the eb now this sort of uh, programs are all uh, game theory approach how do we how do we predict that uh, auto regressive models how do we predict that it will become a zero liquid discharge so in product mix problems and in the environmental problems this sort of uh, uh, linear programming models of minimizing the uh, minimizing the risk of tds in the case of environmental problem maximizing the profit in the case of product mix problem of course subject to certain constraints the constraints are all uh, machinery constraints market constraints in environmental side the constraints are the flow of waters that is coming from various departments and the recycling of water and the type of dosage that you make these constraints uh, are cost constraints some constraints are you are uh, human risk human uh, it should not emanate foul smells and then people should not die when they go near the tank so these sort of human constraints of where the threshold values are given within the threshold value you have to get the optimization this is done in germany at large in india we are just using directly the software but many softwares in india were not adaptable we are we may need to relook into our conditions of indian setting how the environmental problems can be taken up thank you so much srija i think and, i answered your question yes sir now the other question is from mahesh kumar panda he is asking uh, to suggest fundamental books in machine learning and artificial intelligence okay there are uh, books on data mining and uh, artificial intelligence can i 
it is there in my next room in the library i have to go out and take it and show you some of the oh, books sir. but uh, i will share the names and the publishing it is there in my okay, i think okay. in my in this slide it is there some of them are there okay sir we will uh, this slide uh, we... in this slide it is there okay the previous sir. slides and the other interesting the question? references are given here somewhere here okay sir okay sir yeah, another question is what uh, muttu ganapati subramanyam wrote that is ai a boon or curse with respect to domestic life too much of intelligence to machine may leads to destroy the intelligence of average people uh, needs some discussion he wrote sir mr muttu ganapati sir today we want to have a sustainability fit not only fitters will survive unfit also have to survive not that uh, elder people can afford to die they are also needed because their experience in the family life is very important and they also need to be protected when they go to government hospital for corona after attack they should be also looked at if they are not negative patients so what i am trying to say is that every individual every individual have to use in this present world of uh, doubting everything we are having a problem now whether doctor will give the right treatment in right time in right manner whether vehicle is given whether bank will give the fd every individual is now running a risk whether getting a married is also now whether it will be a happy married life forever these are all the normal activities now require intelligence you cannot depend on experience of previous people because we don't respect the previous people experience we want to decide ourselves and you don't have further information in small matters whether to cross the road in smallest matter whether to write the exam in very very smallest matter whether to even go for a next child or not i find that the individual decisions now are more and more than the collective decisions people don't care for others decisions every individual is now making a decision making and they need an intelligence if not natural intelligence the borrowed artificial intelligence is needed it will not disrupt i tell you 2700 death have happened on indian road fias 1700 police stations are there in tamil nadu the accident rate is 2.5 lakhs and uh, we want to get 225 reports of uh, leg injuries and in singapore it is very very difficult to get 225 leg injury people in in tamil nadu just in two districts i got 500 cases in less than one month you can imagine how this uh, accidents came and it is due to particular vehicle in a particular road by a particular group of people and now even ig is not able to decide the individuals have to decide what exactly they have to do so now i will say that every young people should acquire this data based artificial intelligence app in their mobile this sedu by uh, our prime minister is a good app it is an intelligent app who is coming nearer you is uh, covid infected or not you should know today we are in a position that uh, are you all right we are asking neighbors are all right we are asking earlier we were envying about neighbors we are envying about competitors now we want that neighbors are okay our friends are okay because they are coming nearby so this artificial intelligence will be a, will be a life uh, tomorrow and in the young people have when they take individual reading one they take individual decisions they don't have experience they need good app to your uh, uh, life is going with more opportunities but with very very high risk in such situation whether it is a small business or big business you need a good uh, good decision making with previous data it will not replace the job it will not don't think an average person is uh, even average person is i can say school children are working very fast on the mobile app than the mother mother finds it difficult yes sir <laughs> sir okay. next, yes sir. Ne 
next question i actually there are many questions but i'm stopping with this question no sir. no i will answer quickly now all the okay. questions you can i will make two lines answer okay okay sir if many sir, questions are there only 10 sir out of that i have asked you like the three questions are answered now there are remaining seven questions quickly i will tell okay sir uh, this is from uh, this is by dr p fanbushan rao garu and uh, uh, the question is sir do you recommend using fuzzy data in artificial intelligence of course sir uh, in soft computing techniques uh, fuzzy data is much used how are you we ask when the doctor is there when the patient is there they say they are fine when doctor is out when some well wishes is coming is he get irritated the patient gets irritated then his comorbid condition is increasing just totally fuzzy nothing cannot be nothing can be measured we call it the stress level of the now one of the studies uh, that i am working with uh, senior ivf uh, reproductive medicines they say that in covid time in software industries people are working at home now the probability of conception of uh, parenthood is much better because the comorbid situation is totally fuzzy things and that uh, we are not able to collect any given uh, any particular situation of data because how the how the mother and father in young, young age now can become a parenthood when ivf is a challenge so it's totally fuzzy thing now fuzzy things are uh, happening very commonly in retail chain marketing also market basket analysis these are all fuzzy things only and soft computing techniques are used next i uh, mahesh kumar panda asked uh, i work in optimal designs in design of experiments can i extend it to artificial intelligence and machine learning research work it has to be verified and validated okay. with a good uh, uh, multiple uh, regression models the predictability how to be made it then you have to make it as a validity after that only you can use it as an artificial intelligence otherwise it will only make a effect study it will not get the relationship study it may not be applicable to uh, varied conditions it may be applicable to some cohort conditions it may not uh, decision of uh, experiments alone may not work you may need to make a uh, predictive analysis of uh, relationship analysis multivariate analysis the next question is uh, which math has more use in artificial intelligence is differential geometry more helpful or other maths in artificial intelligence by kulveer singh i find uh, dr vital has done good job in differential calculus the rate of changes and uh, in differential calculus uh, flow rates in the measurements of uh, blood velocity to the neuro flow rates in the measurement of petrol bunks here i find that uh, mathematics of uh, even uh, studying the pressure under the sea here i find uh, more than statistical techniques uh, mathematical techniques with uh, domain knowledge uh, helps a lot using differential calculus uh, differential geometry comes in multi dimensional jobs like three dimensional studies uh, where angular of a spring you cannot find out the spring will be somewhere in the uh, subtended angle will be in the air only three dimension we may need to take linear dimensions from that you may need to predict in such situation it is not statistical studies it is only a geometrical analysis there it is really i am not saying that you should use the one that uh, i have shown it as a statistical techniques of course uh, mathematical techniques on differential uh, calculus and uh, our dr vital have done a lot of work and uh, geometry is also very important in the flow measurements uh, and uh, some of the child parts components like springs so this areas uh, engineers are very bad and mathematics mathematics people can do very well okay. next next question is like uh, difference between data science and big data by dr raju <laughs> oh i think i touched upon uh, data analytics is uh, just any statisticians can do okay. data science is something that your domain knowledge is needed with the statisticians okay. the big data is that nine ways that we were talking it can come from several samples or single sample can give multiple variables over a period of time 
so big data is uh, only for a situations like transaction analysis where uh, you cannot uh, you can you can get all the transactions of credit card you can get all the transactions of car sold your vehicle sold you can get all the transactions of your uh, bank passbooks but it is not possible the how the kidney is working 24 hours how do you know it is not possible to collect uh, monitoring of your urine and blood sample 24 hours and 2 months it is a small data but it's a large volume of data here the data science will be used that how they are all related so science science is with respect to the relationship and effects and treatments big data is only the input when it comes to data science the input is related to the output and then certain uh, uh, algorithms are developed of seeing the hidden layers where the neural network concepts are coming the data science big data is only a raw information and data it doesn't say even classification it cannot do it is only saying that so much is available what do you day like in uh, arcel company artel and uh, reliance geo who will leave the plan how do you know whatever plan you take the rate of uh, telephone charge is only same and who will leave to one number to another number or one supplier to another another supplier from artel to geo this uh, what is called uh, turnover of the thing these are all the areas where data science helps but data is already there available in the marketing department of communication industries i have done some work with uh, i think uh, i worked with artel and that uh, president went to geo when geo was introduced uh, their big data and data science uh, both were used with the knowledge of domain how the plans are working next uh, next questions are mostly on like uh, all together economy how this economic designs uh, control charts will be used in ai or can you suggest uh, uh, how a, a mass teacher can go into a ai like that sir See, okay like, this uh, there are special charts like uh, we call exponentially moving average chart where small detections have to be detected in computer numerically controlled uh, uh, machines uh, also in uh, radiological therapies uh, where uh, small changes have to be detected in minor micron and aerospace industries in this cases control charts are used exponentially moving average control charts and dollar rate exponentially moving cumulative sum chart these are all very good uh, trendy charts that uh, is not much used and these things can be used uh, it is very difficult to construct these charts because of its uh, nature of uh, non linear and nature of its uh, difficult to compute every time this can be converted into artificial intelligence after verification and validation next uh, that's it sir the question and session is over sir Okay. Uh, now actually now thank you sir for your informative presentation and actually spending your valuable time in answering question and answer yeah in, in question of session and uh, sir gitam is pleased to have you on this occasion sir and on behalf of department of mathematics and center for learning and sustainability i profusely thank you for accepting our invitation sir and uh, once again thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you <laughs> thank you sir thank sorry you. for uh, holding you for a long time it no no can i leave the platform thank you doctor uh, doctor tripathi rao yes sir yes sir doctor uh, sridhar sir uh sridhar uh, 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 sir thank you uh, sorry sir yes. sir is asking whether to he leave or uh, any presence is required No, so we request sir we request to stay for 5 to 10 minutes okay. because the valedictory function is there we'll be grateful to you sir or otherwise your, your decision thing you can i have a stop happy. sharing uh, i have a program yeah, stop sharing i have a yes, program sir. at 6 o'clock another 10 minutes yes sir I, it's uh, up to you sir okay i we will have a i'll sit with this. you okay yeah, i'll sit you. Uh, for another thank 10 15 minutes Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank welcome, you, sir. Welcome, welcome. Hope thank you all enjoy. Thank you. Yes.
so thank you very much sir this is really an amazing amazing opportunity for everyone of us and we all will treasure the knowledge you passed down once again thank you very much sir for gracing us with your presence and taking out valuable time of yours very hectic schedules and sharing your knowledge now i request professor shri a chandrasekhar garu to share his conceptions about this program thank you very much dr kameshwari madam thank you very much you. madam kameshwari garu good evening one and all first of all good evening to our respected principal professor mukkamala sarichandra babu garu and the yes. department of mathematics yes sir good evening sir because of you this could be possible sir that day you started the program thank you and then uh, sir the, uh, the first of all i would like to tell to all the participants everyone that the department of mathematics is there since 38 years and then of course after that there are several like graduate programs and graduate now in the post graduation program for the first time we are introducing msc statistics in andhra pradesh except in paida engineering college the msc statistics is not offered by any other college so it is a great opportunity for the department to initiate this program in this academic year particularly i must thank dr akir sridhar gar he is the man behind to design the curriculum and he initially he said that instead of going for conventional statistics why don't why don't we go in other direction with the great help of professor k srinivas rao garu and then finally our principal accepted to start this course and a very overwhelming response is there for this program and uh, thank you very much sir and then coming to center for learning and sustainability dr ss prasad rao garu coming forward and uh, encouraged us to organize such this workshop so uh, a one week online international faculty development program organized by our department mathematics department geetam institute of science as well as central for learning and sustainability so the next it's my uh, like uh, thanks uh, i don't know what to say to the resource persons particularly from the beginning first of all i would like to thank professor uma shankar rao garu uh, former registrar sir and akir sridhar garu guru garu and uh, like he is like a department member more than a department member like family member from the beginning from the uh, arranging the resource persons or framing a good uh, for this workshop sir i'll thanks a lot to professor uma shankar garu for bringing out this successfully sir and then coming to the other part friends like the next uh, sharmagar venkat sharmagar from south africa still uh, on the day he sir delivered the talk he did not had lunch also and every day i am watching him like a participant from the beginning to till this minute like a student we are very much thankful to you sir and then coming to the other i will come to the next sir i we the department need a big support from the statistics resource persons mm -hmm. like tirupati rao garu everyone and finally uh, i congratulate my and colleagues uh, like dr m v r kameshwari and then uh, sirisha madam akir sridhar garu nambur sridhar garu ramesh sirsetti garu these are the organizers and of course without my friend my head of the department and ravi shankar this is not possible i thank my organizers for doing such a workshop before beginning a, a statistics course in geetam university and already several scholars are joined for the guidance so we need your support sir and uma shankar garu and then venkata sharma garu rather like tirupati rao garu 
you are like our department member, member sir you have to mentor us and thank you thank you awesome. one and all for giving me this opportunity thank you sri dar garu thank you thank you very much sir now i deem it a great honor to welcome the director center for learning and sustainability professor shri ss S. prasad rao garu to kindly share his views about this program good evening uh, the principal sir chandra babu over to ss prasad rao yeah madam yes. i'm taking i'm not taking much time i'm really grateful to professor uh, sir chandra babu garu the head of the department ravi shankar garu the senior most professor chandrashekar garu and uh, the conveners uh, sirisha garu kameshri garu sridhar garu sridhar garu again there are so many people as mentioned by chandrashekar garu everyone is doing fantastic work and one more you know distinguished uh, observation i made uh, recently the department of mathematics is conducting back to back programs one is uh, from uh, professor tirupati rao from you know pondicherry university yeah, that yeah. went on very well and the second program this one is seven day almost you know seven professors uh, six day full uh, you know length program and uh, there are very good number of participants taking actively you know in learning process and i am sure this kind of initiatives will make so many people coming forward to organize such a kind of programs in the days to come i am really very much excited to see the department of mathematics is doing fantastic work and leading from the front because mathematics now has become you no know, integral part of every you know part of life uh, the complexities are increasing day by day the complications are increasing day by day and disruptions are happening you know wo, wo, you know at, from every direction and uh, to cater you know to tackle this kind of situations the mathematics or applications of mathematics is you know maybe statistics uh, the mathematics and applied mathematics are doing you know a great work and i'm sure department of mathematics uh, will combine with uh, department of computer science so that you know a big data analytics and you know um, descriptive analytics or you know the, that kind of uh, uh, analytics they can enter into and uh, in the days to come the department of science also is coming forward to organize uh, this kind of program i'm sure all the participants will join for that program also that will definitely help everyone to do fantastic research and bring out uh, so many solutions for the problems we are facing and uh, the problems predicted also i'm sure everyone will take advantage and uh, the department of mathematics and uh, you know coming statistics will cater to the requirements in the days to come thank you all thank you very much and i'm also grateful to the resource persons the untiring efforts put in by the department of mathematics in coordinating not only the resource persons but also the participants you know keeping the participants engaged is very very difficult task i know how much amount of efforts been put in by all the organizing team from the day one and you know sharing the feedback collecting the feedback and also asking the resource persons to respond the questions you know and satisfying them in whatever the way it is possible i'm sure uh, the department of mathematics is doing fantastic work and uh, will continue they are now exciting all of us in the days to come thank you very much uh, for giving the center for learning uh, and sustainability at the central administration a wonderful opportunity to meet all of you may not be really but virtually and i'm sure this will add a lot of value in the days to come thank you all thank you very much thank you very much sir for allotting your valuable time and sharing your valuable perceptions now i request professor shri m sarasandra babu garu to kindly share his insights about this program over to m sarasandra babu yeah, very good morning to all of you and uh, it is a great pleasure for me to join in the valedictory session of the uh, the friday six days uh, the faculty development program on recent uh, advances in mathematics and statistics on behalf of the organizing committee i would like to express my sincere thanks uh, to all the speakers uh, professor s rao jammalmadaga uh, venkata ss uh, edavalli and v kannan 
and Professor Shashi Kant Mishra, Professor K. Srinivas Rao, and a recent uh, talk by Professor Raju Palgaru uh, to spare their valuable time for us. So I would like to uh, say a few words about uh, the Gita Minister of Science. The Gita Minister of Science uh, is uh, one of the important constant in uh, the Gita. And uh, we are offering uh, about uh, 28 programs, 15 undergraduate programs and uh, 13 postgraduate programs uh, and also doctoral programs, PhD programs in physical science and life sciences, particularly in mass, physics, chemistry, computer science. In life sciences, biotechnology, biochemistry, microbiology, food science and environment science, etc. And uh, we uh, recently, we took some new initiatives to strengthen our curriculum uh, in UG and PG programs. Uh, the first one is uh, we have introduced the minors in PG programs. That is uh, in uh, uh, different uh, uh, specializations. I think uh, all the students can opt the uh, any of the minor along with the major subject and get the 15 credit uh, uh, certificate during his uh, two years uh, program of study. And another one is we are this uh, from the uh, coming year, we are giving a free license, Coursera license to the all students. I think you know the Coursera is a, a new online platform at this COVID situation is very, very helpful to our students and we are giving free license to all our students and a part of curriculum so all the all students can can opt any number of courses from the and uh, after completion they will get a international uh, certification from the international reputed universities this is a uh, one of the important initiation this year the another one is we we are introducing uh, the project work in the undergraduate program, particularly in BSc and BSc honors programs, uh, to introduce the research skills uh, for our all BSc students. So, and also we have a state of art laboratories in the institute, and uh, we are doing a constructive research in the emerging areas of sciences. So, in addition to this, uh, the research work as well as uh, regular uh, academic work. So we are in the forefront to conduct the various programs, uh, particularly in conferences or uh, FDP programs, faculty development programs, workshops, to enrich their knowledge, the faculty as well as for students. And uh, at this moment, I congratulate the Department of Mathematics to initiate uh, and organizing this uh, the FDP program, uh, the six days FDP program. Uh, I appreciate the efforts of uh, Professor Ravi Shankar, head of the department, and Professor Ravi uh, Chandrasekhar, uh, former head of the department of mathematics, and the uh, uh, conveners of this FDP program, Kamish, uh, Dr. Kameshwari, Dr. Sirisha, Dr. Sridhar, and other faculty members. Uh, special thanks to Dr. Uma Shankar Garu from the Rail Sima University for the timely guidance. Uh, to execute this program successfully. And uh, uh, we are very much thankful to the Prasad Rao, Mrs. Prasad Rao Garu, the director, uh, CLS, uh, uh, for helping uh, to organize these uh, faculty development programs. I uh, Finally, we appreciate all the participants for the active participation for the successful completion of this uh, FDP program. Thank you, Anand. Thank you very much, sir, for granting your precious time and sharing your valuable message. I'm delighted to inform you all that the program would not have been successful without untiring efforts of Professor Uma Shankar Garu, Department of QR and SQC, Rail Sima University, Karnol, and former registrar of Rashtriya Sanskrit Vidya Tirupati, India. Thank you very much, sir, for your all out help. Now I invite Sridhar sir to introduce Professor Sri Uma Shankar Garu. Over to Sridhar Garu. Thank you, madam. 
I am very much glad to introduce one of the crucial mentors who is behind this entire forum as the advisory committee member and an eminent scholar, Professor C. Uma Shankar Garu. Uma Shankar Garu was born in the year 1956 at Tirupati, where the Lord Sri Venkateswara Swami lives. He completed his schooling and bachelor's degree from Tirupati. He obtained his master's degree from Sri Venkateswara University as a ranker. He also received master of philosophy and doctor of philosophy degrees from Sri Venkateswara University, Tirupati. He was the first MPLA PhD awardee in the Faculty of Operations Research and Statistical Quality Control of Sri Venkateswara University, Tirupati. Professor Uma Shankar Gaur worked in various capacities as student professor, associate professor, and professor in the Department of Operations Research and Statistical Quality Control, Ayalsema University, Karnul, for a period of 40 years. For his relentless efforts and services towards teaching, consultants, and research, he was appointed as Register of Rashtriya Sanskrit Vidya Peet, Tirupati, and served for four years. When the NAC Peet team visited Rashtriya Sanskrit Vidya Peet, Tirupati, in the year 2015, he played a significant and pivotal role as a registrar in earning a high CZ GPA score of 3.71 out of 4 point scale. His academic excellence and administrative capacities earned him a number of awards and recognitions, to mention few of them are Man of the Year Award by the American Biographical Institute USA, AP State Best University Teacher Award by Government of Andhra Pradesh, Best Teacher Award by Air India, Shiksha Ratna Purushkar Award by International Friendship Society, New Delhi. Citation and Certification for Teaching and Research in Operations Research Award by Society for Reliability Engineering, Quality and Operations Management, New Delhi. He was also selected and nominated various societies and committees across the globe. Fellow of Royal Society, Royal Statistical Society, London. Fellow of UGC, Basic Science Research. Fellow of Andhra Pradesh Academy of Sciences, Government of Andhra Pradesh. Member Academic Senate, Sri Venkateswara University, Tirupati. Executive Group Member, Department of Higher Education, Government of Andhra Pradesh. Act Panel Member and, co and Coordinator, National Resources Data Management Systems Division, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, New Delhi. UGC Expert and Accreditation Member for granting of autonomous and quality status to various universities and institutions. Visiting various Indian universities as a member of NOC peer team. Chairman, Fact Finding Committee appointed by the Minister of Human Resource Development, Government of India, New Delhi. As a convener, organized the National Joint Combined Entrance Examination for BED, MED, and for research admissions in all Sanskrit universities. Research is an important component of any academician. Now, coming to the Professor Uma Shankar Garu, he guided 20 PhDs and 10 MPs, published 100 research papers presented 125 research papers in different national and international conferences, seminars, and delivered expert lectures, organized 20 national and international workshops and conferences in collaboration with DRDO, DSC, ISPS, ISI, QCI, University of Delhi, etc. Now coming to extracurricular activities, he represented Sri Venkateswara University cricket team for four consecutive years while leading the team as captain in the year 1979 at all inter-university cricket tournaments and also represented Andhra State Junior Cricket Team and then at National Cricket Team. With this brief introduction, I welcome and humbly request Professor Uma Shankar Garu to present remarks about our one-week online international faculty development program on recent advances in mathematics and statistics. Please welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sridhar. Thank you, sir. And a very good evening. I'm really privileged uh, to be on the dais here for the valedictory function. And it is always, uh, I treat as a wonderful thing to be always with my students uh, throughout my 40 years of life. Uh, I thought whenever I am with my students, it's always a learning process. So the student uh, to me is a best teacher in many ways. Uh, and uh, we can get lots of things and uh, that what I personally feel all through the years. And for this particular program, I am really grateful to the distinguished president of Gritam administration, Sri Bharat, the learning vice, the learned vice chancellor, Professor Sivarab Krishna, the dean sciences, Professor Supravanya, the principal, Professor Sarish Chandra Babu, the head of the department of mathematics, uh, Professor Ravi Shekhar, and the former uh, head of the department, Professor Chandra Shekhar, 
the conveners of the program, uh, Dr. Kameshwari, Dr. Sirisha, Dr. Sridhar Nambudri, the organizing secretaries, uh, Dr. Ramesh, and of course, uh, my one of our good students, Dr. Sridhar, who is a direct student of me, the learned faculty and the, the now for the Gita University, and the most importantly, the distinguished speakers who have graced this program at uh, the behest request of the organizers uh, that they have readily agreed upon in spite of their valuable, uh, say, the times and their preoccupations. Uh, they were on um, uh, time in order to deliver uh, wonderful lectures and different uh, advances in, in the areas of mathematics and statistics. And uh, my profuse gratitude to everyone who has provided me an opportunity for this particular program, which is jointly organized by the Department of Mathematics and the Center for Learning and uh, Sustainability of the Gita University. And this program is basically organized in commemoration with uh, our uh, Indian uh, stalwart, uh, leading legend of, for the century, scientist of the century. Professor C. R. Rao, who is a living legend in the area of mathematical statistics and has given world over. And I take this opportunity before uh, I just uh, propose what that has been given by the different speakers of the occasion. My earnest appeal to every statistics and mathematics faculty and a general student, a research scholar, the faculty, the organizers, the teaching faculty, and if whoever and whenever you come across anybody as far as the program is concerned, it, it include the GitHub administration, the principal, the deans, the heads of the departments, the faculty, and every delegate who have been attending through the webinar and also through video, through the YouTube. I personally appeal to everyone, never forget about this. It is the time that the living legend who has been celebrating his uh, centenary birthday during September, during the uh, in the 9th and 10th September. It is it is an apt privilege for the entire country that the Indian government must confer the highest civilian award upon him, the Bharat Ratna. So I, for one, who strongly advocate every one of us, include to write to the government of India, to the PMO species, uh, find some of uh, the number of mails to be given, such that the government do convince about an academician and who the government will be giving this highest civilian award to many of uh, the stalwarts from the Indian origin. And Professor C.R. Rao, who one readily deserves and who is a living legend with 100 years is a wonderful gift for the mother of India that he has been a living legend and he has to be conferred with this particular uh, honor by the government of India. I personally request every academician in their capacities to propagate and send mails to the government of India to the PM species for this wonderful, uh, say, the act for which uh, once it is being given. And uh, on this particular occasion, I pray the Lord of Seven Hills, Lord Venkateshwara, to bestow all his asirvadams, the benevolence, the benedictions upon the greatest of uh, the great Indian scientists, statistician, for a very, very long and many more years to cherish as far as his uh, contributions academically is concerned. And I, for one, who has long association with the uh, living legend, and it is my fortune that I had many an occasion that I was with him. So this is all I request on this platform, on uh, the platform of the validatory function. And uh, I just put forth, uh, because I was uh, requested uh, to just brief the, about the decisions that has been taken by the different speakers here. And the first inaugural lecture was uh, uh, given by, once again, the first PhD student of Professor C.R. Rao, uh, who we had lots of, lots of, uh, say, uh, the interaction with the professor, Professor S. Rao Jamal Madaka from California University, and he has been on the shores of Santa Barbara for over the last 20 years, and he has an acclaimed statistician, and who has uh, uh, given a wonderful talk on natural direction, and this talk includes an amazing introduction to the novel area of statistics, where the observations of directions. It is introduced by raising various scientific issues, where the empirical evidence comes in form of directions and 
how such measurements answer the question in hand. Such examples arise in many natural sciences like geology and biology where one may be directly measuring the directions in two or three dimensions as well as in several other seemingly unrelated and unexpected situations. He has presented in a very, very lucid manner the wonderful lecture which must be a wonderful beginning for this uh, program for all the young uh, scholars and scientists who are working in that direction as far as uh, the statistical theory and uh, methodology is concerned. The second lecture in the second day has been given by one of my good friends here yeah, is uh, Mr. Mir, Dr. Mishra. Dr. Sheshikan Mishra is a professor of uh, mathematics at the Benares in the university. And one of the very important uh, topics of uh, the optimization problem, particularly the concepts of optimization problems and constrained optimization and unconstrained. And during his talk, he has given uh, the focus on unconstrained problems. And while defining the local minima, the global maxima, the gradient functions, the sign of functions and suitable examples. He further spoke on Newton's method its various types of theorems and algorithms, and uh, the merits and demerits with appropriate examples. He closed this lecture by posing very interesting, challenging problems when the researchers, from the end researchers in the area of optimization problems. The third lecture has been presented by his expertise, uh, Professor Tananji, who was formerly the professor and uh, the former rector of uh, the Central University of Hyderabad and pro presently working with SRM University at Vijayawada, who has got immense mathematical knowledge. And also, to me, I know him very personally well that uh, in the Sanskrit University, I had lots of interaction with him, as he is also a wonderful scholar in Sanskrit, who has worked many, many uh, models on uh, the Vedic mathematics. And he has given a very interesting topic on the sequence of real numbers, and started off with the interesting note as why to study the concept of sequences. Explaining the limits of sequences with Venn diagram, demonstrating with many problem sample problems. He at length discussed the belzerna wester theorem and its related five proofs. And quoting that, a very important quote for a mathematician. A mathematician who is not also some, something of a poet will never be a complete mathematician as he cited the number of examples from Wester's uh, dictionary. And uh, he has presented uh, many more interesting research areas for the real analysis of the mathematics stu uh, students. And the fourth lecture has been uh, given once again by the faculty of Gita, uh, relevance to mathematics in data science by Professor Gandhi. In a brief introduction to the data science examples, the role of mathematics and statistics in methodologies that can help in analysis of data, uh, data science. And uh, he has informed the need how the basics of mathematics and statistics do help in data science. He also cited some of his experiences and dealing certain applications in data science in the AP government and some of the other government consultants. Sharing his experiences, he also cited certain examples how he has been doing in his own university, the GitHub University. The next program was by regression analysis and its limitations in data analysis. One of my good, decent, from wonderful, uh, uh, my companion and for many years, uh, Dr. K. Srinivasrao, the principal of uh, the University of Science and Technology of Andhra University. And I had lots and lots of association with him for many years, who combinedly done a lot many academic programs. In his lecture, in a very lucid presentation, Professor Rao introduced the basic concepts of regressions and explained the uh, apt applications of regression analysis. He defined the OLS estimators while detailing the assumptions of linear models. He also took the problems of multilinearity, heterodasticity, autocorrelation, variability, and explained the methodologies to counter these problems in facing the many practical situations. He also made mention about other regression models where the data scientists should have knowledge about for the application in real life problems. In particular, he vividly informed 
as what the limitations of regression analysis for that he has thrown open some of the very challenging problems for the young researchers at the end of his speech next day was very once again an electrifying uh, presentation by once again uh, my companion and i can also put him as my pseudo research guide when i was at a young age in 1980 and fresh from my college and i am at iit and uh, professor sharma adwal has helped me a lot in my mphil and phd degrees uh, while i was doing the same specialization as he has been carried out at iit chennai he has given a, a talk on application of point processes in reliability theory defining the basics of reliability theory the concepts they explain the impact of stochastic processes and then the specialization of point processes and its applications in reliability theory he very clearly demonstrated the concept of product density is one of the very important concept in point processes and uh, in uh, different applications of uh, the reliability theory problems he explained about uh, the marked point processes one unit system with repair intermittently used one unit system and uh, his own innovations in the area of uh, this particular point processes that is the innovation of application of preparation times which it has been uh, very at large you have discussed with the professor uh, tirupati rao also about this application of preparation times in different uh, stochastic uh, model applications the other concepts like uh, unit system cold by stand systems warm systems and systems with preventive maintenance it's a very important area as well as the reliability systems are concerned the preventive maintenance and uh, systems with imperfect switch role the n unit system care of n systems and uh, with random environment and his presentation is very well listened by the delegates of uh, this webinar and today we have a wonderful lecture once again by professor rajagopal though it has been informed only yesterday morning i requested professor rajagopal to deliver the lecture because my own guruji professor p v arunachalam ji who is around 85 years going strong and he is a, is called as the professor of mathematics in these areas say in our royal sibi areas and he is very well known in the mathematical circles and he was a former vice chancellor and he has really made a big big breakthroughs in uh, uh, what we call as uh, the mathematics specializations and uh, he would he ought to have been presented a lecture on breakthrough in mathematics but unfortunately he could not come to, 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 to here today because he is not well and he requested that for somebody else to take out the session and we are really grateful to professor rajgopal who has readily agreed a part to just come over today in a very short information and he spoke on the today's relevance that is in days to come now as far as the specialization in the software technology is concerned it is all about artificial intelligence and machine learning so any any software technologist today is is looking upon or all ai applications and the machine learning processes which it has been very very fine presentation by professor rajagopal and we have very long association of nearly 40 years because i basically belong to the or and quality control division and uh, we have a lot of interaction with the isi units all over the country and also with isi calcutta and we had many occasions uh, to have with lots of time uh, with professor rajagopal and uh, very important thing is that uh, this webinar is being uh, chaired by the eminent scientists uh, who have given their expertise and uh, should be beneficial for all the delegates who have been attending for the week long program and i hope that uh, the department of mathematics have sustained a wonderful work they have taken lots of uh, pains in getting through the program and there is a wonderful response also what we look at from outside and such programs will be always useful for the people for the young science for, for the young uh, students and the researchers in particular particular it will be very useful and uh, generally uh, 
uh, to carry uh, while presenting uh, the conferences or workshops previously. But today, as the technology is getting changed, and uh, we are all sitting within the four rooms and uh, making some interaction because uh, the world over through the world can be seen now through the computer monitor and the technology as such it is technology driven uh, studies and even the government of India is coming up what we call as a tall uh, uh, this uh, uh, teaching methods are also getting changed slowly as the environment is getting changed. And this is one of the finest methods in which you are able to come out with some of the conferences or the workshops. And I, for one, is really happy that such a wonderful program is being organized by the Department of Statistics and the Center for Learning and Sustainability of the Githam University. And generally, we attend such programs. And whenever you go and wherever you go, you get a lot of people to meet, a lot of pleasantries you exchange, lot of uh, ideas you are getting, lot of new people you will be getting, lot of newness you are filling out. And ultimately, after the program is completed, apart from all these gaining things, these are all the advantages once you are able to attend conferences of this nature. The one most important thing is as you get back to your own homes after the program is concerned, that is the academics you carry back with you. And the academics with which you have been in the learning process for a week longer, that should be always to be remembered and it's always to be exploited and it is always to be implemented as far as your further academics for teaching and research and consultancies are concerned. And at, uh, at the outset, I am really happy and I'm really grateful to the uh, administration once again at the Githam University and in particular, my, my dear student, Dr. Sridhar who has provided me the opportunity to interact with his own department, with the organizing and the other faculty of the Gita. And I'm also grateful to the delegates who have been, uh, uh, who have been sincere enough all the days uh, to come and uh, take part in this particular academic program. So I wish, I wish that many such programs to be taken up by the Gita University, which is uh, proving to be one of the leading universities now today in the southern part of India and in general in the Indian environment and covering various uh, disciplines here. And I wish all the best and God bless everyone in the Githam Institute for such academic excellences in the years to come in their future endeavors. Thank you very much and thank you once again, providing me an opportunity on the platform as far as this validation is concerned. And I particularly profusely thankful to Professor Rajagopal, though he has uh, some assignment even after six o'clock uh, uh, to grace the valedictory occasion. Thank you, Professor Rajagopal. Thank you, Gita Madhuri. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity given. Thank you so much for the opportunity given. And Dr. Sridhar Garwars. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Omar Shankar Garu, thank you. Ah, Guru Garu, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Or first, 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 you have come here to give a wonderful talk and obliging, uh, and obliging. <laughs> yeah, and people greatly benefited uh, through your expertise. Mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. what we really required. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So, thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much sir, you. for allotting your precious time and attending all, all the sessions. sessions. Thank you. Now I invite Sridhar Garu to propose formal vote of thanks. Over to Sridhar Garu. Thank you, madam. I consider it a great privilege to propose a formal vote of thanks to all who witnessed this uh, international faculty development program on Recent Advances in Mathematics and Statistics 2020 as a memorable and a successful program. From, from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of the organizing committee, to express my gratitude to our beloved President Sri M. Sri Bharat Garu, Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor K. Suram Krishna Garu, Honorable Registrar Professor K. V. Z. D. Balaji Garu for the motivation, encouragement and excellent support to the organized international FDP. I extend my sincere thanks to our resource persons, Professor Yes Rao Jammal Badashagaru, California University, 
ప్రొఫెసర్ విఎస్ శర్మ ఎడవల్లి గారు విటోరియా యూనివర్సిటీ ఆఫ్ సౌత్ ఆఫ్రికా ప్రొఫెసర్ ఏ రాజగోపాల్ గారు ఐఎస్ఐ కోయంబత్తూర్ ప్రొఫెసర్ వి కన్నన్ గారు ఎస్ఆర్ఎం యూనివర్సిటీ ప్రొఫెసర్ కె శ్రీనివాస్ గారు ఆంధ్ర యూనివర్సిటీ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఎస్కే మిశ్రా గారు బెనారస్ హిందీ యూనివర్సిటీ అండ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ కేఆర్ఆర్ గాంధీ గారు గీతం డి ముతుబి యూనివర్సిటీ ఫర్ ఎన్లైటింగ్ అర్ విత్ యువర్ వర్డ్స్ ఆఫ్ విజ్జమ్ ది పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ హావ్ ఎంజాయిడ్ అండ్ ఎన్హాన్స్ ద స్కిల్స్ బై యాక్టివ్లీ లిజనింగ్ టు యువర్ సెషన్ సార్ డియర్ సార్ వి ఆర్ ఫార్చునేట్ ఇనఫ్ టు హ్యావ్ యూ ఆల్ thank you sir thank you very much for sparing your valuable time work with us i am so glad to express gratitude my beloved teacher dr shiva shankar garu former professor department of oar and sqc royal sim university former registrar rashtriya sanskrit vidyapeeth a central deemed university tirupati for his inspiring guidance encouragement and continuous support during this program the international fdp could not have been concluded in a grand manner without your support and guidance sir no words of gratitude adequately enough to express my indebtedness for your mentorship sir my special thanks to professor p tripathrava garu dean ramanujan school of mathematics pondicherry university for his encouragement and motivation my special thanks to all the advisory committee members of the international fdp i thank professor a subramaniam garu dean science for his excellent support and cooperation in conducting international fdp my special thanks to our principal professor m sarachandra babu garu for creating such an excellent ambience for organizing the this kind of academic event we are very much pleased to propose our thankfulness to director center learning of learning and sustainability professor s s prasad rao garu for his excellent support and encouragement to, to organize this ifdp ram 2020 under the center for learning and sustainability we are very thankful to cat department especially cto sri s gopal g gopal krishna garu and technical staff mr k nageswar rao mr a ramchandra rao mr venkatesh and ms k ramya for their support in the technical aspect i am thank to our head of the department and chairman of the international fdp professor n ravishankar garu for his marvelous guidance and motivation to conduct this international fdp my sincere thanks to co chairman of this international fdp professor a chandrashekar garu and the panel member dr s ishwara garu for their guidance my sincere thanks to dr tu sachinarayana gsis miss sai kumari web designer gis for their support i wish to thank my organizing committee members dr m r amitri garu dr sirisha garu dr sridhar namburi garu and dr s ramesh garu for their tireless efforts from the time of the proposal to date to till date in making this program a grand success my sincere thanks to faculty members of my own department for their support and each and every moment no academic event will be successful without the presence of the delegates my heartfelt thanks to each and every participant for your active and energetic participation your valuable presence made this one week online international faculty development program more memorable thank you Let us conclude the program with a national anthem. <laughs>